right, we live, we live. Good evening, everybody. I'm Minister Marcus. Welcome to the Maximize Your Life Bible Study. It's Wednesday night, and we are back. Uh, I think I've been gone for like a couple of weeks. I had a couple of people ask me last week, was we coming on? And tonight we on. I told them no, uh, but this week we are on. Uh, I do got my kids in the house, so if y'all hear a little rumbling and jumbling in there, that's what it is. <laughs> it's good to see you guys. Uh, for those of you who do follow our Bible study, what we have been doing is we have been going through uh, the various books of the Bible. We take one book every month. And so it's January and we have been going since I think August or September, but we are up to Joshua. So we starting on a new book tonight and the new book is Joshua. And um, and so tonight we're going to Joshua chapter three. Um, it's great to see you guys tonight for all of my TGMites. For those of you who have been asking, we are back. So I will be back next week. So tell somebody, tag a friend or share it if you can. But tonight we're coming from Joshua chapter three verse one through seven. All right. Joshua chapter three, verse one through seven. And so we're going to be in Joshua this whole month. So whenever you get time, read a chapter or whatever, and uh, you know, you will be able to connect with the Bible study that way. All right. So Joshua chapter three, verse one through seven, I'm reading this out of the new living translation. Okay. And it reads early the next morning, Joshua and all the Israelites left Acacia and arrived at the banks of the Jordan River, where they camped before crossing. Three days later, the Israelite leaders went through the camp, giving these instructions to the people. When you see the Levitical priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, follow them. Since you have never traveled this way before, they will guide you. Stay about a half mile behind them, keeping a clear distance between you and the Ark. Make sure you don't come any closer. Then Joshua told the people, purify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders among you. In the morning, Joshua said to the priests, lift up the Ark of the Covenant and lead the people across the river. And so they started out. The Lord told Joshua, today I will begin to make you great in the eyes of all the Israelites. Now they will know that I am with you just as I was with Moses, all right? And so that's Joshua chapter three, verse one through seven. And just to give you guys uh, a little bit, just coming up, where we stopped at in Deuteronomy, the children of Israel were on the other side of the Jordan. They were getting ready to cross over into the promised land. And so um, what, the, what we have been going through, we have been following the nation of Israel out of Egypt, uh, uh, and into the promised land. And so they were in the wilderness for 40 years. So one generation died off and this is now a new generation. And if you remember, they were at the edge of the promised land, not yet going in, but they was getting ready to. And this is where we find in Joshua at the end of Deuteronomy, Moses dies at the end of Deuteronomy, Moses dies. And I want to just kind of hover right there just for a little bit. Um, because I want to point out that Moses was God's man and God spoke to Moses face to face face and God did everything that the children of Israel know up until this point is Moses. But at the end of Deuteronomy, Moses dies. Right. And I, and I, I, I want to uh, highlight that because if 2020 taught us anything it, it, it let us know that death is a part of life and nothing about life is permanent. But the only thing about life that is certain is death. And so I know it's not always pleasant to talk about it, but in reality, one day we all have to do one thing and that is die. You don't know if you're going to get rich. You don't know if you're going to get famous. You don't know, but you do know that one day you're going to die. And I want to highlight that because nothing in life is permanent. And, and another thing 2020 ought to taught all of us is that we should take advantage of every opportunity Take advantage of every opportunity. And I believe that God set it up, that death is designed to make us appreciate life. And if you can't look back on all your relationships, if you can't look back on all your partnerships, if you can't look back 
on 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 the things that you have been into, and you can't say that you gave your best or that you did your best. I, I think that that 2021 is your year to make sure that you evaluate whether you have been doing right by the people you love. Do the people that you love know them? You you, you know you don't like I said you don't know whether you are gonna uh, uh, make a million dollars, but you do know that death is certain, and because of that, we ought to appreciate life. We ought to take advantage of the opportunities to love. I know so many people um, who, who are not talking to their brothers, not talking to their sister, not talking to their mom or dad. And, and, and the reality of that is, is that one day death is going to come. You don't know when, but you know for certain that it's coming. And so no matter how saved you are, no matter how good of a person you are, you know that death is coming. And so I look back on every relationship and I know that I gave the best I could give. And I know that I did the best that I could do while I was there. Why? Because I know sooner or later death is going to catch up with me. And so I like that because here's Moses, who is God's man. And God has done all of this stuff through him, but Moses has died. All right, Moses has died, and God has now turned his face and selected Joshua. And I want you to hear me when I say this, that death is a part of life, but sometimes the hardest part about death is to keep going. God's plan doesn't stop. He gives them time to grieve, but God's plan does not stop. And I want to hear that. We rolling into part um, the first, number one. Because God used Moses to get them there. But now that Moses has died, God is about to use Joshua to take them into the land. And I want you to get it that Moses was the navigator, but Joshua was the warrior. And I want you to get this, that they were both used by God to accomplish his purpose, but they were used in different ways. And I think that that's very significant because sometimes people will make you think that God can't use you because you don't act a certain way, because you don't talk a certain way, because you don't dress a certain way. But I love that Joshua did not try to lead like Moses. He allowed God to use his strengths. And I never forget this. My grandfather passed away and my dad took over my grandfather's church and everybody was talking about my dad filling my grandfather's shoes. And my dad said something that was real significant. He said, I can't feel my dad's shoes. I have to feel my own shoes. And that was his way of getting everybody to understand that I'm not going to be like my father was. Right. I'm going to be my own person. And I think that's significant for 2021. And here's number one. Number one is find yourself, learn yourself and then be yourself. I'm going to say it again. Find yourself, learn yourself and then be yourself. It's easy to try to be somebody else when you don't know who you are, right? I found myself when I was younger trying to uh, preach like all the rest of my cousins, trying to talk like everybody else, trying to hoop like everybody else until I found me. And I think our problem is that we don't appreciate ourselves because we don't know ourselves. We spend so much time looking outward that we never take the time to look inward. And here's what, find yourself, learn yourself, and then be yourself. Sometimes what God has to do is he has to arrange a difficult experience to introduce you to you. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there where God sends you through a difficult experience and you learn something about you that you didn't know? You find a strength or a gift that you didn't know that you had? It's always right. It's always when God moves and he allows you to go through a different experience so he can introduce you to you. And then when you come out on the other side, you realize, why did I, you know, have you ever been there? You know, I'm not, I, I, I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just talking about me. But have you ever been in an experience that you dealt with and dealt with and dealt with? And then you came out of that situation a little bit stronger, a little bit wiser this time. And you look back and you was like, how did I allow myself to deal with that? Come on, for so long. And it was just because you didn't know the strength that you had. And I love how God does it. He introduces you to you. You find a new level of respect for yourself. You didn't know you had that much strength. You didn't know that you could deal with it. You didn't know that you could handle so much. And sometimes God has to send you through some difficult experiences so you learn something about you that he knew, but you didn't know. And so I, I want you to do this. Find yourself, learn yourself, and then be yourself. This year, spend time asking God to show you your strengths, to show you your gifts, 
to show you your talents? Have you been trying to work or operate in the place that not designed for you? Get it. The key significance is not found on the keychain, but the significance is found when it gets to the door that is designed to unlock. And I believe that some of us have been trying to squeeze and fit ourselves into the wrong doors. And this is what I love when I see Joshua. Joshua does not try to do it like Moses. He doesn't try to act like Moses. He recognizes that his strength is to be a warrior. So he's not there to be a navigator. And I want you to hear me when I say this. Some of us, some of you have been trying to fit yourselves in the wrong door. And so for 2021, number one, your prayer needs to be, God, help me to see me, help me to learn me, and then help me to be me. I found this out. When you stay in your lane, nobody else can't touch you when you're in your lane. And so one of the prayers that I had to start praying, show me where I fit at, God. Show me where I fit. Have you been trying to fit yourself in a place or in a position that's just not for you? And you'll find yourself being frustrated. You'll find yourself being annoyed when you try to fit yourself in the places that's not designed for you. And so you got to allow God to help you to find you. And sometimes it takes us longer than others. And this is one of the reasons why we need God. I need God to show me me. This is what the Bible said, that he knows the number of hairs that are on my head. God knows things about you that you didn't even know about you. And so you need God to show you some things about yourself. Sometimes we go through things. I know I said, I'm going to say it again, because sometimes we go through things. He has to send us through things so that we pick up on some stuff that he knew that we didn't pick up on. Right. And so that's number one, find yourself, learn yourself so you can be yourself. When you find your superpower, that's, that's what I call it. I found Marcus. Marcus is my superpower. You know why? Because nobody else can be me. Other people got my same name, but nobody can be me. And I want you to hear me when I say that nobody can beat you being you. And so this year you got to find out where you fit. God, where do I fit? Where is my purpose? Where do I need to be working at? What areas of my life do I need to cultivate? 2020 is gone. This is what he said to Joshua. Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. It's time for you to move forward. But Joshua had to know who he was. All right. So that's number one. Number two. All right. So here they are at the edge, right? Getting ready to go into the promised land. And I want you to get it because they're at the Jordan River. They're at the Jordan River. In order to get into the promised land, they had to cross the Jordan River. This is our number two. Crossing your Jordan River. River. And I, you know, I love this because it's such a parallel to life because sometimes, oftentimes in order to get to something, you have to go through something. Yeah. In order to get to something, you have to go through something. And many people never get to what it is that God wants them to have because they aren't willing to go through what it takes in order, come on, to get there. You know, I meet a whole lot of people and they knew me when I had a little bit of weight on me, right? And they always ask me, how did I do it? And then when I tell them how I did it, and then I see them the next two or three months and they haven't done it, it's not that, come on, I want you to hear me. It's not that they don't want the result, but it's that they don't want to go through what it takes to get too. And sometimes I want you to hear me when I say this. I know it's 2021, but you got to get to the point where you get ready or you're ready and willing to cross your Jordan. And I don't know what, when I say the Jordan, your Jordan can be anything. Your Jordan can be fear, right? Your, your Jordan can be anxiety, mixed emotions, uncertainty, being uncomfortable at a certain place or point in your life. But I want you to hear me when I say this. If you want to get to it, you have to learn to be willing to get through it. If you want to get to the prize, you got to be able to look. They had to cross the joint. I think that's so significant because sometimes God designs it where you will never get to it unless you go through it. You're trying to go around it. You're trying to go under it. You're trying to go over it. But God says, no, nope, the only way you're going to get to what it is I have for you is if you go through it. You might have to make some hard decisions, but be willing to go through it. Deal with a period of difficulty. Be willing to go through it. Sometimes God will design it to where you have to cross a Jordan in order to get to the thing that he has for you. Going through it will take you to it. Come on, say that. Going through it is going to take me to it. Going through it is going to take me to it. All right, so that's number two. And I'm almost finished. This is what he says. He says to the nation of Israel, he says, purify yourselves because God is about to do a work uh, among you. Purify yourself. Sanctify yourselves 
uh, because God is about to do a work among you. And I really believe that that's the word for saying this number three right here. He says, purify yourself. Look, this one word detox. That's what comes to my, my mind when they say purify uh, detox. You know, we can go churchy, we can go spiritual, but let me go real natural right here. He says, make yourself clean because God is about to do some work around you. God is about to do some work in your life. And I think that that is a word. I think that's so on time for us going into 2021, because what if I was to tell you that God was about to do something amazing in your life, but it's, but, but, but it's going to take you cleaning yourself. And I, I do mean physical too. Yeah. Yeah. Physical. Yeah. Some of us been, we've been drinking too much. Some of us, we've been smoking too much and we just need the detox. We've been eating the wrong type of foods. I'm talking physical, but not so much as the non-physical parts of yourself. He says, purify yourself, not just the outside outside, but the inside. I want you to hear me when I say somebody's spiritual man needs to be detoxed. Somebody's mentality or mindset needs to be detoxed. Somebody's emotions need to be detoxed. He says, clean yourselves because God is about to do a work, not just to clean yourself, but because God is about to do some work in your life. And I want you to hear me when I say this as I get ready to go off. You can enjoy and experience what God is getting ready to do in your present if you are still full of all the negativity of your past. And so here's what he says. He says, purify yourself, clean yourself. I don't know who this is for, but it's time to clean yourself of the grudges, clean yourself of the revenge, Clean yourself of the bitterness and anger. Look, for some of us, cleanse yourself of the fear. Look, he says, purify yourself because God is about to do something in your life. And I don't know who that's for, but I want you to hear me when I say this, that God is about to do something in your life and you won't be able to appreciate it, enjoy it or experience it because you have so much uh, negativity pent up. And here's what I say. You know what I used to say? I used to say that God won't bless you until you're ready for it. But I like I want to change that. Right. Because sometimes God will send you exactly what it is that you pray for. He'll give you exactly what it is that you want. And you will mess it up. Why? Because you so full of stuff. Come on, I want you to hear me. He says, clean yourselves out. And I think that's a word for the church people. I think that's a word for the people that don't even go to church. It's time now to start cleaning your inner man. Clean your heart. Clean out those intentions that are not right. Those different morals and mindsets that are tripping you up. And this is what the Bible say. The Bible says to lay aside every weight and the sin. And I'm, I'll get to the sin later. But right now, let's talk about some weights that the, the weights that hold you in place, that stop you from being all you can be, that stop you from going as high as you can go. He says, purify yourselves because God is going to do a work in you. And I hope that's a word for you because right now it's time to clean it out. Come on, say this with me. Say, God, clean me out. God, clean me out. God, I need you to clean me out. I got some bad habits I need you to help me clean out. I got some mean ways I need you to clean me out. My attitude, God, I need you to clean me out. I I got some habits. I got some things that I need to just need you to clean me out. Come on, say clean me out. He says, purify yourselves for God is going to do something among you. And I want you to hear me when I say this, that God wants to do something great in your life. But in order for you to enjoy it, in order for you to experience it, in order for you to make the most of it, you got to clean yourself out. And so with that, guys, that wasn't even deep. That wasn't heavy or spiritual or nothing. But I hope something that I said tonight is really a blessing to you. Listen, I want you to join either the online community or come and visit us one Sunday morning. You can go to www.thegodmovement.com, become an online member, and that'll give you access to all of the many things that we do and give and, and do to help all the Christian people everywhere. Uh, we do have shirts also. If you want to be a blessing to our ministry, you can definitely purchase a shirt. You can also give to the TGM Cash App. It's uh, dollar sign TGMCF. All right. And so and so I just want to give everybody an opportunity. We do give to the homeless year round. We do care packages. And so we pass those out year round. So if you want to be a blessing in that way, you don't have to give money. You can give some of the items. You can go to our website and see all of the things that we do and all of the things that we give. 
It's www.thegodmovement.com. Thank you guys for tuning in. I will be back next Wednesday night. And so I want you to do this. Set your clocks for 830. We do late night Bible study every Wednesday night. And I come on and I say something to try to encourage those of you who are trying to live the Christian life, just trying to be a little bit better than you were yesterday. So thank you guys for tuning in. I'm at my 20 minutes almost. Good night, you guys. Have a great night. And I'll see you guys next week.